Hi everybody, welcome to Reality Buzz TV. I wanna continue with Umkosi what we widows unveiled you guys because Umkosa Pelang is all, you know, and it's all I was rushing because you know I had a lot to do in the morning. That's why I did the video walking. Also, you guys, please know to go to uh, I did update my loyal viewers in terms of what's gonna be happening on this channel. And uh, because I am studying this year, I don't have as much time. So you'll be getting all sort of uh, videos. If I have, I'm sitting somewhere and I'm like, okay, you know what? I can do a video here. I'm going to be doing a video here. Because if I have to wait for the time where I uh, have time to sit on my desk and do a video like I used to do, I'm just not going to be giving you any videos. So if you click on my video and I'm walking and talking and you don't like it and it sounds bad or whatever and it's irritating, you click out. Okay? We're not going to have that in the comment section. Not today. <laughs> so you guys, we're going to talk about Sigele Langobane, Umesis Ngobane, who is uh, Menzi Ngobane's widow. Okay? Now, you guys. We're talking about Umam Fundes. Now they've become close Umam Fundes with uh, Umam Angubane, and now they are talking about their husbands because the show is Widows Unveiled. So if you're joining the show, we have to know how your husband passed away. How did you meet your husband? How did she pass away? How has the um, how have the in-laws treated you? All of that, you guys. Now, did you know that Menzi Ngubane passed away, living at some church, sleeping in a mattress while she was sick. Did you know that? Did you know that? Okay, no problem if you didn't know because you are about to know. Men Zingubane passed away at some church and he hadn't seen his wife in like what, three weeks, sleeping in a mattress in a very bad condition, being very, very sick. That's how he passed away. We never got to know about it. Now, let me tell you. This is how uh, Usigele explained how they met you guys. And I was like, this is a very sensitive thing because at the same time, they're talking about somebody that has passed. And you know, they will say, you can't say things like that about somebody that has passed. Things that you can't say about someone that has passed. But when a wife has come out here and, 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 and spoke about it or talked about it, then we have to talk about it too. Okay, so she says they met in the early 2000s with Menzi Ngubane. This is the time when Menzi Ngubane was um, starting out in generations because you know Menzi Ngubane, we know him from old drama series, Zagu SAPC one or whatever. When she, he was, uh, who was he? Gambe that um, thug. <laughs> yes, Nyambona was. Now, and then okay, later on, he started being on Generations. So they met then. He was, she was a receptionist or something. They, she wasn't acting or anything like that. They met. They see each other for like a year or something or a year and a half. I suspect it was less than that. Okay. I suspect it was a, an afenyanyana for a few months. But she says it must have been a year or a year and a half. They go their separate ways. Menzi goes, find his wife, wh whom I suspect has always been there, had always been there even when they were dating, marries her, stays with that wife for seven years. When she finds out that Umenzi is getting married, Umenzi got married, that is Umenzi Ngubane, she calls Umenzi Ngubane. Guys, listen, I was like, listen, if I have a man and we go our separate ways, kind of, even if we didn't break up, if I find out he's getting married, I am calling that man, Okay. You know, I will break my phone before I call that man. But Jenage, she called. Kri, kri. What is this I hear about you getting married? Men's Ngubani is like, listen, peace. Oh, man, man. Yes. <laughs> she did to, to her what she would do in that drama. Guys, what is the drama that the woman was on? The one that, not Ugwa Kalanyonin, because she was, he was first on Ugwa Kalanyonin. And then there was another one where he was Ubabuskebing. So he's like, get busy. I will mess up his column. And she waits. He doesn't call back. She calls again. She's like, I want to find out what's happening. She's like, listen, I told you. She said she gave up. And I'm like, you should have not made a call. <laughs> Who makes a call to ask somebody that they're getting married? You already had broken up. You know, even if you didn't tell each other, you said yourself you had gone your separate ways. But I'm like, listen, I like Mrs. Ngobani, by the way. But this, this, because I was like, mm, you know, okay. 
Then she says, after the, the marriage of seven years, he comes back. I guess he was now divorced from his wife because she's not clarifying whether they came back and had an affair while the wife was there. And then maybe she ended up divorcing. But he comes back after seven years. He says, when he came back to her, he had already had a kidney failure. Remember that Menzi had dealt with the kidney failure at some point. And he had had a kidney failure. So he said when she, when he came back, he was not the same because now, you know, he's sick. He's not the, the boyfriend that left you. He came back to you now. He is sick. Okay. That's why I'm saying this gossip is very hard because it's like we're talking about somebody that has passed here, but it, it does, it was kind of like, so many just left you. Uh, and then when he was sick, he came back to you. Mm, okay. Now you guys, she says it's okay. Okay, they they. Uh, she doesn't ask how they get to get married, but at some point she does mention that they did. She was Telwat Genyongo, so Teli when Genyongo came, so I guess they did have a traditional wedding. So officially, she is Umakoto Wagangkuban. Now you guys, she says that then in May 2020, Umedzi started having these headaches that just wouldn't go away and then he'd be in and out of the hospital. And then at some point he went to the hospital, had a stroke while in the hospital. So he went to the hospital because the headaches wouldn't go away. He comes back in a wheelchair because now he had had a stroke in the hospital. Okay. Now, you guys, he, she says she was taking care of men. In the beginning, it's like, yeah, she, she's, you know, presenting this picture of how she took care of her man very, very well. Her mom even took care of um, her man. Even her mom used to rub men's in Kubane, his arms and all of that and all of that. And I'm like, yeah. The whole time she's telling the story, you're like, this was why husband and wife living together. So, of course, you're going to take care of your husband until she says this. Okay. She says, then she receives a call one day from Menzingubane. I'm like, you're receiving a call from Menzingubane. And what was Menzingubane? Because the story you're telling is like you were living together. You know, she receives a call from Menzingubane and says, listen, uh, I don't know whoever my brother or someone has come to fetch me. We are going to this church. She says, church, what church is that? We're going to this church. They say that, you know, I'm going to go and see if I can get some prayers from this church. And nada, nada, nada. And then she's like, oh, okay. So when are you coming back? He's like, I, I'm not sure, whatever. And then she and he ends up going. First, I'm like, wouldn't if your husband is like really like sick to a point? Because she says, Menzi Gobane at that point was sick to a point where he was using a wheelchair even to go to the bathroom. They have to like lift him to go to the bathroom. They had to bath him, had to feed him, have, had to do all of that. If somebody calls me and say my, they're taking my husband somewhere, like hold on, okay. <laughs> I'm dropping everything wherever I am to go and find out what do you mean you're going to a church? What church? You know. Where the address, the whatever. Oh, I'm going with them to the church to see what's happening in that church and staying with him in that church. Or at least I go and I see the condition of the church. No, she never went. She was like, okay, if you think that's an idea, then maybe. So I'm I'm suspecting maybe she was feeling like she needs a break from taking care of him herself. Or maybe there's just something that we don't know about that. She's not telling about the story because otherwise it's not make sure. He goes to the church, you guys, and um so when uh when she is when he is at the church and uh, the first week passes and then she's calling she calls and she's like how can when are you coming back she's like you know what no we they are praying for me here i think i'm okay and whatever you know and uh and then after like almost three weeks now she's like no i'm coming to fetch you but this is what she says you guys she says i'm coming to fetch you please send me the address of the church now I'm like your husband had endless headaches and then had a stroke in the hospital, was using a wheelchair, needed to be bathed, fed, uh, rubbed, massaged, and all of that. For three weeks, your husband is in, it's at a church you don't know and you don't even know the address of the church. You don't even go and check on him, not even once. What do you mean? You know, what? do you mean okay but she says that okay, after three weeks she decides she's going to fetch him fetch him she speaks to him and then he's like you know what 
the one time she uh, she speaks to him and he doesn't sound right it's the time that she's deciding to go fetch him it doesn't sound like he's okay she's like listen i just need to rest i need to sleep listen you guys when i feel like whenever your loved one is um not is like ill seriously ill and they say they are resting it's usually not a good sign no, usually not a good, especially when they just get to a point where they're like, mm, I just want to rest. It's okay. I love you. Let me just go rest. Stop them. No, I'm joking, you guys, because you usually can't stop them. And also something happens to you where you only realize afterwards that they were actually saying goodbye. So then you guys, um, he passes away. Now, even after she, he passed away, she never went to the church. You know, I guess the arrangement were made for Umzimba to be taken where he was supposed to go, the funeral and everything. The father was already sick at the time. Remember, you guys, it was in the news. The father was already sick at the time, but she called the father to say, listen, what must I do? People are saying I must bring him back home. And I never heard him say he wanted to come back home. The father was like, no, just bring my son home. And she was like, you know what? That's when I decided to uh, uh, allow them to bury him at home. Okay. Now. She says after the funeral, somebody in, uh, I guess there was uh, close to the family tells her, you know what? Actually, when Menzi was at that church, the first week that he was there, he told me that that place was not what he thought it was going to be. So it wasn't, it wasn't the right space for him. It was like after a week, he told me that. Okay, now I'm wondering, why would he tell that to somebody else, not his wife? So then she goes, afterwards, the funeral is done now. She goes only after the funeral now, because she says before the funeral, they were not able to go and fetch his um, perfumolo, fetch his spirit, you know, like Gelsangu and stuff, what we do as black people. Did I just wait? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, so uh, she goes to the place now where you land. That is the time. What? Once her husband had passed, buried okay that's when she found out the church that was the first time she went to the church where her husband was while he was sick having had a stroke with endless headaches needing to be bathed to be fed to be rubbed to be everything that was the first time she went to that place that was the first time she actually saw that it was not a place that she i don't know if she thought that it was a church hotel you know because no no church has hotels but for some reason, she never went to check on him. I'm like, who? Do, where does that happen, you guys? You know? And she says that's where she saw that it was a really bad, terrible place that he was taken to. He was sleeping in a mattress, you guys, and uh, in a really terrible conditions. I don't know. Maybe you will understand it. I myself don't understand it. I don't understand how it, it, she says that for three weeks he had been gone with, because she says that he ended up going with uh, his brother to the place. Why didn't you go check your husband, you know? And I'm not saying that, you know, you did anything wrong, but I'm just saying you are on a reality show and you've told us the story, so I have questions. Why didn't you go check on your husband for three whole weeks? Why didn't you find out what, what kind of place this was that your husband was at while he is sick? So it, here it is, it is, you guys. Menzi Ngubane passed away in a hospital in a, at a place where he wasn't properly taken care of from what the wife is saying. But I don't understand how his family, his wife, and anybody that was close to him let that happen to him. But it did happen to him. I'm telling you guys, I told you yesterday, I said, run to show Max and watch this show. <laughs> You know, if you feel like episode one is boring, no, Begazela until seven, episode seven and eight, because that's where you are getting, you know, in the in the umkosi. Okay, in the umkosi. Bye, you guys.